we go? All right. Um, so prediction is really uh, a primary role of cortex. Our survival depends on it, and there's many examples of the predictive nature of uh, neural computations. And these show that perception is really an interplay of top-down expectations with bottom-up sensory info. Uh, so to, to develop models to kind of uh, analyze this, um, I've developed neural networks with the goal of, given a sequence, try to predict the next frame. Uh, and for a model architecture, I use an encoder, which feeds into a recurrent neural network, which then feeds into a, a decoder. So an input sequence comes in, uh, it gets encoded in some feature space, um, and these feature vectors go through an RNN, which churns and then produces uh, a feature vector, which goes through a decoder to produce an output frame. Uh, and so for our first experiment, uh, I've been playing around with rotating MNIST digits. So these digits rotate with a random speed and have a random center. Um, and then I train the network using backprop through time to just minimize the L2 pixel error. Um, and so you can see that the, the networks do pretty well. So the, the predictions match up pretty decently with the, the actual next frame. Um, and we can actually um, treat the predicted frame as an actual frame and feed it into the model and do this recursively to generate a predicted sequence. Uh, but it, in the real world, everything's not deterministic. So in the, the previous example, if you knew the rotation speed and center, you could exactly solve the system. Um, but in the real world, what we have is a, a probability distribution of the next frame given the previous frames. Uh, and in this case, L2 error just simply uh, doesn't suffice. Um, so to get around this, I've used um, a formulation called the generative adversarial network. Uh, and this was introduced by a pa in a paper by Goodfell et al. Uh, in 2014, and essentially what you have is a, a generator network and a discriminator network, and the generator tries to produce a um, proposed frame, and then the discriminator says if it looks real or not. And you train these in an uh, alternating fashion to compete against each other uh, with the eventual goal of developing a generator that can sample from this uh, probability distribution. Um, and so to test this, uh, I've been using probabilistic sequences. Uh, where the first frame is either 0, 1, or 2, and then there's uh, a second frame with any number, and then depending on the first number, the, the second frame shifts uh, by some amount. Um, so if we just train this using L2 loss, uh, it, it doesn't work because um, essentially what it tries to do is generate the average response, even though you'll never actually see these frames in real life. Uh, but if we use the, the GAN formulation, uh, it does much better. It's definitely not perfect at this point but it generates uh, potentially realistic sequences that uh, you see given this um, uh, probabilistic sequence formulation. 